Hello and welcome to the topic of image optimization in terms of website design. Now this week before I get started I want to focus us a little bit on perspectives of design. There are two to three major design strategies and depending on which direction you choose to go you might use different tools. In terms of the general categories, and of course you can always mix and match, but it's always in your best interest to have a good understanding of what common tools are out there as well as how to handle them basically. There is one uh, school of thought that basically says all design should take place in terms of writing HTML, CSS, throwing in some jQuery and JavaScript to control it. And of course the more modern iteration of that, or certainly something that's very um, common and will become much more common as we move forward is writing all of this in HTML5 and CSS3. The promise of CSS3 and HTML5 is that a lot of the standard design features that we were used to looking for like drop shadows or specialized fonts or um, specialized font logos, a lot of that is starting to be developed in HTML5 and CSS3. So huge advantage, advantages in doing it that way because you're not bloating your page. However, there's still a huge, huge benefit to learning how to design from a graphic artist standpoint. And that is done predominantly through a tool such as Photoshop. And the approach there would be to either design the entire page as one large graphic layout and then slice it up um, per the needs or you can create specialized graphics that could then be inserted into the HTML CSS3 and you could get into designing logos and headlines with display fonts and we'll talk about that next week as well and of course there are other specialized strategies in terms of designing and one of the more popular ones out there is Flash. But of course Flash has some ups and downs and um, we'll talk more about that as we move forward in terms of design. Now this week what you need to do, you have your week 7 to-do list and the first thing you want to do is go ahead and download and install Photoshop Elements. Now I'm using Photoshop Elements because it's actually a lighter weight version of the full-blown Photoshop, which we don't need. Um, if you are struggling, if you've got a senior citizen type computer and you can't download and install this, please contact me so that I can suggest some alternatives. The other things you're doing are you're going to go through and read these two articles and kind of get a sense of how radically different page weight has become in terms of what's acceptable in our time. I will want you to go ahead and calculate your page weight of your new portfolio and calculate it before you've done any major changes. So whatever your new portfolio page is looking like right now, go ahead and calculate that web page as it stands now. I will throw up a quick video on how to do that here momentarily. The other thing I'd like you to do is just get a sense of what Creative Commons is. As a very, very brief piece, this is a venture or uh, an effort that allows people to contribute photos, educational content, music, videos, all sorts of different things, and have different types of licensing on them. One, of course, is just the simple attribution license where you have to give credit. One is an attribution with no derivatives. You can't change the image or the work as it stood for. Um, and then it goes forward through a, a variety of different combinations. Above all, whether you're using an image from Creative Commons or whether you're using an image straight off the internet, you do want to pay attention to copyright laws. You don't want to infringe upon anybody who says that you can't use their product. And more importantly, for everything across the board, regardless of whether it's a Creative Commons license or not, you should always give credit to it as part of your coursework. Now in this particular week I've also um, put in two sample images right here, sample reading a book and sample artist studio. The one I'm going to work on here is sample artist studio today and um, that's the one I'm going to 
play with the most. The, the main things you're going to be working on this week, let me jump to the end of week seven here, is I want you to have a page that represents a cropped picture, a page represented a resized picture, and a page representing a resample picture. And on each of these pages, I want you to list the original image or insert the original image along with its size and have the weight or the file size of the original image and then insert the newly created image whether it's cropped, resized, or resampled and have its weight. In addition, I want you to run that page through a website optimizer page and get a number as to how big the page is in terms of uh, kilobytes or bytes. So those are the the big things today in terms of uh, this week's work. So first thing I'm going to do is I've gone ahead and downloaded an image from the Creative Commons area in Flickr and I just want to show you how I've done that so that you have a good sense of how you might go about doing that same kind of thing. You certainly do not need to use the same image, although I have linked to it here. So under Sample Artist Studio, I'm going to go ahead and click on that one time, and that brings me to this image. This was this is posted by the Smithsonian Institution, and even though there's no copyright restrictions on this, I still want you to go ahead and give credit to the image. Now, in terms of grabbing an image from Flickr, Flickr can post multiple sizes of images. If you simply click on the image one time, and then up here where it says View All Sizes, go ahead and click on that. Now, in general, if you know that you're not going to need the full size image, then you might well want to go for one of the smaller sizes that they have posted here. However, in general, as a rule of thumb, I always go for the largest version of the image. It is far easier to go ahead and shrink this image down in terms of resampling or cropping than it is to try to make a small image larger. Now the thing you need to notice here of course is that this original image is 4032 by 2820 pixels. That's huge. Most modern monitors are going to go probably about 1200 pixels wide. So in terms of a background kind of thing, should this be appropriate? It would certainly be a good size to start with, but it's probably fairly hefty in weight in terms of file size. And so today's lesson is going to focus in on getting these larger images and balancing between shrinking them versus what's okay to leave as a, an original size. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and go to the original, which is huge. You can kind of tell because it's taking its sweet time to come in. And I'm going to go ahead and, and save that image just as I would save any other image in terms of web design. I'd right click Save Image As. Now, because of these videos being specialized, I'm going to stop here and I will see you in the next one.